So we are on the draw here, but going to keep it. We've got a couple creatures. We're kind of looking for a collected company for sure. Um, and it looks like our opponent is playing an aggressive human strategy most likely. So being on the draw is definitely going to hurt us a bit here. Um, so we'll see how explosive um, the draw our opponent has is. Post board on the draw, I mean pre board on the draw. This matchup isn't great, but we can definitely win. But it looks like our opponent does have two one drops, two more one drops. So, could be over pretty quickly, but kind of run out the Zolaport Cutthroat. And hope for the best. This white red human stack, though, is just really. I mean, it can have some really explosive draws when on the play. Um, and that's what we're seeing. So, Kithian is going to end up flipping here. We can chump block if we want to, but just going to take the damage. Kithian is going to flip. And now the Cutthroat is forced to attack Gideon. So even though we have a company now, we're still under a lot of pressure. So we can play the Drana's Emissary. And if our opponent has basically anything in addition to what they've already played, it's just going to be probably lights out for this game. But we will see um we've got kithian which becomes a 4-4 plus the inside of rabble which is potentially eight damage now the thalia's lieutenant is getting bigger wow so our opponent actually has two more creatures to play here um so pretty much the perfect curve out scenario for the humans deck and we are basically forced to make a block here with our Drana's Emissary because otherwise this is actually a lethal attack. So going to go ahead and block. And this is going to basically mean we're falling to three after the cutthroat trigger. And yeah, this ally encampment isn't what we're looking for, but we're just going to pass here. Presumably our opponent's just going to attack here with everything. Um, the Thraven Inspector is going to grow the Thalia's Lieutenant. So in order to survive here, let's see, we would definitely need to hit at least one Calastra Healer, if not two. Uh, so going to cast this Collected Company. Uh, it's two Expedition Envoys. That's not going to do it. So, yeah, I guess we are going to go to the next game. Wow. Pretty explosive draw there from the human standpoint. So, let's go to sideboard. We can board in Languish, which is clearly good against this type of deck. We're going to take out our Anguished Unmakings. Um, we're also going to board in these Shambling Vents to help enable casting languish and as far as what we want to take out the march from the machines can be good um zulaport cutthroat is a card we can at least shave on if not completely cut um we are trying to be more controlling after board so i actually think the sylvan advocates are reasonable options here we can cut and one land since we're boarding in two copies of Shambling Vents. And besides that, cut one Drowner. The Drana is good, but you never want to really have two. And we're, we're blocking a lot of time against this deck anyways, so I'm fine with cut, cutting a couple of Dranas. 
And I think two marching with the machines is is reasonable, though we could go up to three. Um, and so then the other card we want to board in is Enlighten Ascetic in this matchup. So I think we just want to go completely control, go up to three marches, um, board in these two Enlightened Ascetics to deal with cards like Griff Spoon and Always Watching, and then just go ahead and get rid of the Zulaport Cutthroats. Even though they, they do gain us some life, they're not actually great blockers on their own. And I think Calastro Healer is more impactful overall. So we're going to go with this. And being on the play is pretty nice. This hand is okay. We're going to keep it. Um, we don't have a languish, which means we're going to have to fight the good fight, essentially. Um, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. Um, we've got some reasonably sized creatures here. And so this turn we have a choice between... Sylvan Advocate and Lantern Scout, and I think we just play the Scout here. Or, sorry, the Advocate. Um, sorry, the choice was just between Sylvan Advocate and Serene Stewart. Next turn, we can potentially play the Lab Lantern Scout. The reason why I like the Advocate here is because our opponent would need to pump the Dragon Hunter in order to trade with the Sylvan Advocate. Um, and the Thalia's Lieutenant. If that's played, we can still block if we want to with our Advocate and trade Advocate for Dragon Hunter. So we'll see what's what's up here from our opponent's side of the board. Lantern Scout can be used to buffer our life total, but we need creatures that we are able to attack with. So that's kind of the, the key with, with the scout. And it looks like our opponent may be taking some time off to deploy a couple of additional threats here. So this time, because our opponent's on the draw, even though they've gone one drop into two more one drops, we can at least play a, a little bit. We have a, we have a little bit more game this, this time around. So if we deployed Lantern Scout, our opponent does have a double block available to eat our Advocate. So rather than doing that, I think we just want to play this Drana's Emissary this turn. And that can sort of become the way we pressure our opponent moving forward. Now, if our opponent does have Always Watching this turn, that would be the worst for us. But Hanmore Militia Captain, that's actually pretty annoying for us because it's just a big creature that we are going to have trouble dealing with. And so we'll see how our opponent wants to attack, if our opponent wants to attack. And it looks like no. And that could be because um, our opponent wants to flip this mil Militia Captain which makes sense. So from our point of view, we don't really want the Militia Captain to flip. Um, and we drew a Plains for the turn. So we could play the Lantern Scout. We could also just attack and plan on playing a Collected Company for this turn. So both of those options are reasonable here. I think I like attacking. This puts our opponent in a situation where they're just not going to block because of wanting to flip the Militia Captain. And so now we can just let our opponent take this damage and play Collected Company during our opponent's turn. The Westvale Cult Leader, it's pretty scary. It's a scary card, no doubt. But it's beatable. We have we have aerial attacks here, um, and it looks like our opponent is gonna get aggressive by attacking with the cult leader even. So I find this attack a little bit strange since we have hissing quagmire here, 
Um, we, we have the option of activating the Quagmire and just blocking the Cult Leader. We could also cast a Collected Company. So both of those options are pretty appealing for this turn. Um, I think we actually want to go ahead and activate the Hissing Quagmire. And then just save our collected company. So we can just simply block the cult leader with our quagmire. And we're just going to take essentially 7 damage, including the anointer damage. So an anointer can pump one of these threats. And we're going to take 7, but now the cult leader is off the board, and we can attack for our turn. We can also play Lantern Scout if we want to. And our opponent's only got one card in hand, so even though we are behind in the damage race, that was a pretty decent exchange for us. This, on the other hand, isn't great news for us. The Silk Wrap is going to take care of the emissary we had which was our best threat on the table so this turn we have the option of choosing what we want to play we could play envoy and scout or we could just leave up collected company um, I think I like leaving up the collected company here so we're just gonna attack with the advocate and pass Hopefully the Collected Company gives us something decent, otherwise we're in trouble. But Collected Company normally is pretty good in these types of situations, so it's a little bit of a gamble. That wasn't a bad turn for our opponent, Knight of the White Orchid, Papa Clue. Um, and now some attacks are incoming. And I would expect our opponent to attack with everything besides the anointer, but it looks like just the inspector and the dragon hunter are coming in. So we are going to cast Collected Company here. And not the greatest of hits. We're going to get another Sylvan Advocate and a copy of Serene Stewart. So, the play here just seems to be double blocking this Thraven Inspector. So, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and do that. We want to we want to try to get our opponent's creatures off the board. And if our, our opponent kills the steward, we're fine with that. Because it's going to leave us a little bit of an opening to a, play our lantern scout this turn and get in for some damage. So we're going to do that. Our opponent can now double block one of the advocates if they want. But it looks like they're just going to take this. So that's going to make the life totals nine apiece. So pretty close game here, actually. If we draw another land, our advocates become bigger. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have something like they do have, like declaration is pretty bad for us here. So, yeah, we did not want to see declaration in stone this turn. Um, pretty good for our... But always watching is pretty good here. Um, 
So, unfortunately, if we were at one more, we would have way better blocks for this turn. As it is, we essentially have to block everything, um, except for we can't block the Dragon Hunter. So, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and double block Lieutenant, block Anointer, and block Knight, but it's not pretty. So what our opponent should do here is use their Anointer to pump the Anointer already in play to get rid of our Lantern Scout. And that's what is going to happen. Okay. So a lot of our stuff's going to die and only our opponent's Thalia's Lieutenant is going to die. So that always watching was, was pretty bad. Um, we basically now need to draw a Languish, and we did. So that's pretty nice. That's going to basically allow us to stay in the game. Um, we're still in a, a bit of a rough spot, especially given our lands. But let's go ahead and start with an attack with the Advocate, since the Advocate's going to die either way. We might as well attack with it. And our opponent might be thinking, what can we possibly have um, in this situation? But we're just going to languish and then replay the Envoy. But basically any creature our opponent could have at this point is going to represent lethal damage. So we this wasn't really the moment we wanted to draw the languish, but we'll take it. Hoping our opponent does not cast any creature this turn. But, okay, there's Thraven Inspector. That's bad for us. So, probably... Yeah, we're... Okay, Serene Stewart was our draw, so... That's not going to be good enough as long as our opponent remembers... They have a Griff Spoon in the graveyard, and so they should be able to just move the Griff Spoon onto the Thraven Inspector and then take care of this game. So, yep, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Uh, not too surprised, but oh well. All right, I guess that's the match.